Hello there, and welcome to Everything Coptic. I thought I would take a break from our regular videos and go over the fast that we have now begun, which is the fast of the Holy Virgin, St. Mary. And I hope this isn't a fast like the Apostles' fast. And if you're Coptic, you know what I'm talking about. When many persons try to say, we don't fast this fast. That I don't understand. Why we wouldn't fast a fast? Whether there requires justification that certain fasts are okay and certain fasts are not. We talked before regarding the Wednesday and the Friday fasts. Some people don't think that they're justified. Some people think that, oh, well, perhaps it was St. Pope Krellos was the one who instituted it, or maybe it was just this Ammo, or maybe it was just something random. But we learned that this came from the first century, from the mouth of the apostles themselves. But where does this fast come from, and what's the purpose of it? This is a fast of love. This is a fast of adoration. This is a fast unlike the other fasts. And it is a fast that demonstrates the Coptic Church's absolute appreciation, love, their undeniable relationship and closeness with Holy Virgin Mary. And what should that teach us? There are many lessons to be held here. We can look, for example, her role in the economy, so what does that mean? Her role in God's plan of salvation. When we consider Eve, for example, Eve ate the fruit and sin entered the world. Yet, through the second Eve, who is Virgin Mary, Christ enters the world to save the world. We can look at Virgin Mary as the workshop of salvation. We see Virgin Mary as she who Christ took flesh from, this flesh that is presented at the temple, this flesh that receives circumcision, this flesh that is baptized and washed, this flesh that suffers and dies, this flesh that rises from the dead, that is glorified that ascends, that he presents to his Father and says, this is the work that we have completed. That flesh, which is a gift, which is an offering, which, upon reception by the Father, is exchanged for the Holy Spirit, that he descends upon mankind, that he returned after he was chased away by Adam and chased away specifically by Eve. We see through Virgin Mary the return of mankind. But on the other hand, we see within Virgin Mary mankind choosing God. But we consider the Lord looked down from heaven and found no one like you. There was no one who was like Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary is incredible because she, in fact, on the one hand, is chosen by God, by his foreknowledge. But God knew how she would respond. God knew her great love, and she demonstrated, by, demonstrated such by being in the temple, by serving there, by saying, I am going to consecrate myself for the Lord. We read, I believe it's in Revelation chapter 10, I believe. But we read in Revelation about this woman who has 12 stars, who sits upon the moon. We see this typology of Virgin Mary. We see the stars, the apostles. We see the moon is John the Baptist. We see the sun, which is Christ. And we see in Revelation this woman who is giving birth and this beast waiting to consume. And we consider the great love 
the son has for his mother and so far that he provided for her to save and protect her. Consider Joseph, that the Lord took him and appointed him, set him aside through the descent of the dove to protect Virgin Mary on the one hand from the Jews, that she was a virgin who was giving birth. Well, the Jews probably likely didn't believe this. If it was just a virgin girl in a temple who gives birth, they absolutely would not believe that this is an immaculate conception. They're going to believe that she's a liar. So what does the Lord do to protect her? Gives her Joseph, and Joseph is a mighty good protector. Because instead of calling her, trying to call her out, he tries to put her away. And that's when Archangel Gabriel comes to Joseph in a dream and says, No, she's telling you the truth. She is giving birth to God. We see within Virgin Mary a heart of silent contemplation. We see within Virgin Mary that she received such word, such message from Gabriel, and she kept it within her heart. But back to Joseph, back to Joseph. We just took a moment to talk about Gabriel, but back to Joseph. We also see that the devil was adamant to destroy Virgin Mary, to destroy Christ, and he sought the virgin, but he was outsmarted. There was Joseph. He couldn't find who that virgin was. And of course, he uses Herod to try to kill the Lord. And of course, the three wise men, the three magi, they go a different path. They do not return to Herod because, again, the dream. So the Lord is saved. Then, of course, they go to Egypt and they flee there. And again, they are spared, they are saved <clears throat> through Joseph, through his care and his love, through the Lord placing him over that family. She was protected, and that demonstrates the great love God has for Virgin Mary. But back, of course, considering again her contemplative and silent spirit, how can this be? For I know not a man. Not challenging in terms of lack of faith, but she decided to dedicate herself in virginity. That was the offering, the promise. Some may think that the offering of, or, sorry, some might think that virginity is lacking. It's lacking a relationship. It's lacking intimacy. No, 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 no. Not here. This virginity was an, a complete, a complete expression of her love for God, that God makes her whole and she needs nothing else, that she rather is offering herself as a complete, as a whole burnt offering, giving herself completely. I wish, I hope, and I pray, can we offer ourselves completely? We look at the monks, which there's Monasticism right now in Egypt requires so much prayers with everything that's going on, but offering oneself fully, offering oneself fully in prayer and Bible, and this of course could be offering oneself fully in the reading the Bible and the spiritual life. It could also mean in the moments that we're praying that we are all there. That, for example, our minds aren't wandering in liturgy, but that we are working for liturgia means work of the people for the people. We see within Virgin Mary great love, that she is the greatest intercessor, that for the sake of mankind, she asks our Lord. And because of their relationship, because the Lord loves her so much, he will listen. Therefore, the Coptic Church places so many intercessions, so many moments through the liturgy, through the Iqbeya, through all the avenues of prayer, that we always ask her intercession because she is the greatest intercessor. We see her love and care that she appeared in the church in Zaytun, that she was there for all to see, all of Egypt, which is predominantly Muslim, and that they even try to cut all the power out, try to cut all the power off to see whether it was a projection, but no, 
It was light. It was her. It was her apparition. And all were in awe. And all traveled far to see her. To have an experience, a moment with her, with this amazing woman. And some may go too far and say, oh, we worship Virgin Mary. No, 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 no. We do not worship Virgin Mary. We venerate her because the amazing work that God has completed through her, that he got that flesh and that he saved mankind through that flesh. We venerate her for her position with the Lord and we venerate her because of all that she has done for mankind and continues to do with mankind. And that's what we are going towards in this feast, the great love God has that God did not allow her body to even stay on earth to see corruption, but rather on the third day that body was assumed into heaven. And of course, if we look in the book of Jude, we see that the devil battles with Archangel Michael, and Archangel Michael fends off the, the, the devil over the body of Moses. The devil wanted that body. But Archangel Michael protected it because God was the one who buried it. God takes care of his beloved, of his chosen ones. And we see that always in terms of martyrdom and others, the relics and the veneration of stuff, of such. And we see here the veneration of Virgin Mary, that God loved her so much, he took her body to be with him so it would not see corruption but we do not worship virgin mary we venerate her again for the great gift because of the things she does we venerate her because of what god works through her we venerate her and through her we glorify our lord jesus christ we believe as orthodox that her virginity is perpetual that is to say she was a virgin before during and after the birth of Christ. Hence, when you see our Coptic icons, there are three stars, or often it's two stars, and our Lord Jesus Christ is the third star, the first representing virginity before marriage. The middle star is virginity during marriage, and the last star, who is Christ, is virginity after. And she dedicated her life. Have we dedicated our lives? Are we as Virgin Mary, who as unlike what the non-denominational people say, they believe that she went out and she had, she then gave up her virginity and she went and had more children. We don't believe in that. She kept her virginity. And even St. John Chrysostom, all the fathers, they're like, it makes so much sense that she remained a virgin. She dedicated her life to God. She said, how can this be if I'm a virgin? She had no intention, literally no intention of giving up her virginity. This was her life, and this is what she would always live. So why would she change her mind suddenly? But it was always within her conception to express that love. And why, after giving birth to God, would she go down or give up her, her promise? Oh, Lord, I promise I would offer myself to you. But after giving birth, no, oh, no, done. I fulfilled it. No, no, no. She's going to go further up. She does not. Sorry, she does not suddenly find a decline, but she keeps growing. That's how we should be as Christians, always growing, always moving up. On the one hand, I'm happy for where I am. I'm happy the Lord has brought me here, and I'm content to avoid and to fight against sadness. But on the other hand, how I wish, how I hope, how I know and recognize that I must grow and aspire to conform more and more to the image of God, that I may be like him that I may become as he is, transformed through the, to, through the work of sanctification, through the Holy Spirit, through the prayer and intercession of Virgin Mary, that we do not stop and say, I'm done, I've completed my work, and I'm good enough. No, no, no. That's why we read the saints and we study the saints, so that we can always see how far that we have fallen short. But it's incredible that we see such an amazing person as Virgin Mary, someone so holy, someone so pure, so chaste, a model of virginity, even a model in all aspects of life, whether it be marriage through her through her uh, betrothal to Joseph or her presence at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. We see her as a, an example, a model for all Christians. And that's why 
it describes her in the Psalms as the queen who we follow, who takes us into heaven. That's why we describe her even as the church, as a boat who takes us again to heaven. That Virgin Mary's main goal, main thought, glorify God and bring all people to him. Shall we not do the same as Virgin Mary? Shall we not glorify God? Shall we not bring as many persons as we can, the entire church, carry such to enter heaven? This is a fast of love. This is a fast of transformation. Hence, the Coptic churches will do revivals. They will invite a speaker. They will have a veneration service, an Ashea service, or the evening raising of the incense. And they will look at their spiritual lives, asking Virgin Mary, make me. Pray that I, that the Lord may allow me to become more and more like him, that I may follow your example. As St. Paul says, if you can't imitate God, fine, then imitate me and you will imitate God. That we may follow Virgin Mary's example to be more like our Lord Jesus Christ. So I pray, let us fast this Virgin Mary fast with seriousness, with sincerity, with a genuine heart. Let us look at her example. Let's consider her quietness, her humility, her love for God, her trust and faith in God. Let us consider a life of intercession, praying for others. Let's consider her great example that as we say, I believe it's in the Wednesday Field of Kea, God looked down from heaven and saw no one like you. We pray through the intercession of the Holy Theotokos, St. Mary, that we may be transformed in this fast to be like our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is due all glory and honor with his good Father and the Holy Spirit. And glory be to God forever. Amen.